second and worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Holy. moment and just lift him up. If God has brought you out of something, can you just give him the highest praise today? We lift you up today, Jesus. We worship your name today, God. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Just oh, yes, God, we lift you up in this place today, God. We're thankful, Jesus, that you brought us out of darkness today, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name. you up today, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, we magnify your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. Lord, we recognize the power of your name, Lord God. The power of your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, we magnify you, God, as a body, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God, you make the darkness tremble, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, listen to the word of God speaking about the name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by him, by this man stands before you whole. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Can we go back into it again one more time? Oh, let's worship him for that name. That name, that name, that name, that name, that name. name. And wonder, I will say, no other name but yours. recognize that your name is above every other name Lord God we recognize your name Lord Jesus we do bow before your name we magnify that name Lord God thank you Jesus thank you Lord the revelation of your name thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord we get ready to go into a time of prayer if you ask anything in my name can we grab a hold of that scripture today if you ask anything in my name I will do it oh Jesus Lord Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe we believe that there is faith in the house. Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody's reaching for the Lord. Somebody's grabbing a hold of that scripture. go into a time of prayer let's remember today uh, Joel Reed is senior let's definitely remember him today 
Let's remember uh, Frank, who's with us today. And if you could just stretch your hands towards Frank, but don't, don't approach him, but just stretch your hands towards him. He would appreciate that. Also, Randy Wellman and uh, Brother Fox all need a touch from the Lord. Lord God, we come to you today, Jesus, thanking you, God, for the power of your name, Lord God. The power that rests in your name, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you know these that need a healing today, these that need comfort today, these that need strength, Lord God. Lord, in the power of your name, we are asking in your name and having faith in your name, Lord God, that you will do it. Lord, you are so faithful, God. We magnify you, God. We trust in your name today, Lord. Lord, in your name, God, is power, God, and strength, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your name, God, and the power that's in your name, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You can be seated. I want to announce again this uh, Valentine pizza party, and uh, it's for the kids, 4 through 11, and uh, if the adults that uh, bring the kids wanted to stay, they can, but, but Jody reminded you now, if you're, if you're an adult and you're dropping off your kids, this is an opportunity. Jody actually gave me permission to say, you can drop off your kids and leave. <laughs> Jody, did you say that? Yes, yes, they will for two hours. She says, go have fun for two hours on her and the team. So this is Saturday, February 12th from 5 to 7 p.m., uh, geared for ages 4 through 11. There will be pizza, games, and crafts. Uh, so that would be something to look forward to and take advantage of. Please do that. So if you can, you can prepare your offering and prepare to bring it up here while, we, uh, while this hymn is being played.
Jesus. Sin was heavy, but change break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. shelter I was an orphan now you call me the citizen of heaven and I was broken you were my healing now your love Glorious 
today. We're out of the grave today. We've been resurrected by the power of the Spirit of God. Once we were dead in trespasses and sins, the Bible says, but now we have been made alive. We've been made alive. We didn't know we were dead. We thought that was normal. But when we came alive, we realized, oh, this is what I've been waiting for all along. This is what I've been wanting. This is what I've been looking for. Life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing compares to it. Hallelujah. It is the desire of God to fill every single person with this new life. Hallelujah. He said, I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. I'm not talking about some kind of a, 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 a feel-good thing that you have for a moment, but true, abundant life. Life that is filled with the joy of the Lord, which is our theme for this series for the month of February. I truly believe it is the desire of God for us to not only ourselves be filled with joy, but to be helpers of joy in a world that has lost its way. Amen. First, Second Corinthians chapter number one. You've been standing. Let's look right quickly into our text today. Jeff, good to see you. Amen. Sister Bicena, good to see you. Other guests as well. God bless you for being here today and all the regulars, those that are watching as well online. God bless you each and every one. Second Corinthians, the first chapter, beginning with verse number 20. We'll read four verses of Scripture here where the Word of the Lord says, For all of the promises of God are what? In Him, yea, and in Him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Next verse, verse number 21. Now He which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, in our hearts. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. For by faith ye stand. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul begins this section of 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 with this statement that God's promises are yea and amen. That means you can count on them. That he has not decided to take his promises off the table. But the promises of God remain. They're steadfast. They're secure. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Amen. The world can't steal the promise of God out of your life. Amen. Amen. Sin may block you for a while from enjoying these promises of God. But if you repent of your sin, God's promises come flooding right back. Amen. All of them, he said, are yea and amen. That he has established us and anointed us. And has given us the seal of the Holy Spirit. All of these things, Paul said, make me joyful. And that I can become a helper of your joy. I have been stirred in my spirit since September. About that phrase right there. Read the Bible through so many, many times. Saw that phrase, but it leaped off the page. I don't know if it's because we are living in a day and hour, this pandemic that we're praying is coming to a conclusion. I don't know if it's because we're seeing so many people taking their lives, 
Suicide is on the increase. Depression, discouragement, so many things. Marriages crumbling. So many negative things in the news, the economy. So many things. This world is testifying that it does not have the answer. So where the answer must now be seen is in you, the church of the living God. Because we are a helper. You don't know how much you appreciate a fireman until your house catches on fire. You don't know how much you appreciate a policeman until somebody's trying to kick in your door at midnight and you're on 911 and their sirens are coming your way. You never, never really know how much you appreciate those people that are sitting outside in an ambulance until your heart feels funny and you can't get your breath and they're coming through with a stretcher to take you to a hospital. And the world does not know how much the church matters until the world gets dark and it gets sick and tired of the condition that is. This is what I believe is the message, the message that God wants to bring to us today. Let's lift our hands and our voices and raise them unto God. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We acknowledge you in this house. We need you, Jesus. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Bless the preaching of your word today. Let it be received in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Joseph Campbell said, We cannot cure the world of its sorrows, but we can choose to live in joy. The world's sorrows cannot all be cured. Jesus Christ is coming back for a church. He's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready. Not everybody's going to be saved, unfortunately, because not everybody is going to believe the gospel. Not everybody is going to yield to the love of God and allow his salvation to be uh, theirs. And so we find that the world has its sorrows. It's not a new thing. If you are a student of history, you know that from the very beginning of the world, there have been great sorrows. Pestilences are not a new thing. War is not a new thing. Conflict is not a new thing. Divorce is not a new thing. Murder is not a new thing. Crime is not a new thing. All of these things have been a part of the human experience from the earliest beginnings when man chose to disobey God. It is through the sorrow that we often feel from the life that we're living or the sins that we have committed that causes us to want relief and release. It's those sorrows that weigh heavily upon us that causes us to want to hear a good message about Jesus forgive sin. It's those sorrows that that I believe that weigh us down and keep us from experiencing the life that we know we could live that helps us to make a change. When you hit bottom, then you're able to look up. It's only at those points, however, that people begin to make the changes. I am living in a world, and you are living in a world, I know, that has hit bottom. Many, many people have come to an end and realized that that which they were putting their hope and trust in has been uh, uh, like shifting sand. That, that, there, that there is so much that they believed about life that now they are questioning. They, they believed so much uh, uh, that, that man had this innate goodness that would look out for the betterment of others and until they begin to realize that so many of our problems that we find in our world today or because of the love of money, the root of all evil. That they believe that, that nations uh, uh, would enter into some kind of utopia experience because of education and, and so forth. But what we are seeing, man, sadly, is, is that nations still have the desire to conquer other peoples and, 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 and hold them down down. Oh, we we find that even races are having struggles uh, with one another. People people can't quite get along. And and these sorrowful times, uh, amen, uh, are are, are sickening unto us that are in the church. And it makes us cry out, even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. If you're not anxious for heaven, something's wrong with you. (laughs) 
If you're not looking to the eastern sky regularly, something's wrong with, with you. I, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready to go with the Lord. I'm ready to go meet him in the air. I'm ready for him to come and set up his kingdom upon this earth. I'm anticipating it with joy. But friend, there's a lot of people in our world today that they are, they are imprisoned by sorrow. They are imprisoned by this heavy grief that they cannot seem to escape from. They're drowning in this kind of agony. And they, unfortunately, are not finding the answers in this world. One of the statements that I have been making to many different people about this pandemic and all that it has uh, brought about is how amazed I have been that backsliders have not been rushing back to the church. I have been amazed that, that people that know they're not right with God, that people that willingly live for the things of this world, that, that they uh, that turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the mercies of God and, and, and the preaching of His gospel. I have been amazed that we have not seen our churches filled with people that used to love God, used to know the Lord, used to walk with God. Because this world, all of its craziness, all of, all of the things that that, that are out of order. It would cause me, if I was a backslider, I would like to think it would cause me to say, I, I can't handle this no more. I, I've got to go to an ark of safety. I've got to run to a shelter. I, I've got to find where God's blessing is. I, I've got to find His presence again. I've got to go where I know I, I can be safe. And that's always been the church for me. Hallelujah. Hadn't it felt wonderful here today? Amen. Just reminding us, amen, as, as, as Pastor Kidder alluded to last Sunday with the, the hope service that we had and all of the testimonies that were, that were shared about how God had met people at their point of need and had brought them through great sickness or great troubles in their life. And, amen. We walked through that door of hope again. And, amen. And, and, and experienced that fresh realization that wherever we are, whatever valley we're in, that there's a door. God always miraculously puts a door, a portal, a place where hope can be found and you can escape through that doorway into the hope of God. Oh, how wonderful, how wonderful that service was. And then we gathered here tonight, today, and we've been rejoicing and singing and praying and celebrating the goodness of God. How wonderful. It's just felt like church today. It's just felt like a place of safety. It felt, amen, when the presence of God began to move in. This is where I belong. This is where I have been missing. This is what I need. This is what my soul longs for. This is like a, a drink from a cold, cool fountain. But I can't understand how many backsliders are not scared out of their ever-loving mind. That they're not staying up all night long wondering if this is the end. I mean, they read the Bible. They read what Jesus said about the signs of the times. They can look into the book of Revelation. They, they've known these things. They've heard these things preached about the end times. And now they, they, they read their paper. They, they, they see what's going on. And, and they see all of those headlines seem to fit perfectly with what the Bible says would be descriptions of the last of the days of man in this, uh, this, this dispensation but yet it doesn't cause them to come rushing back it doesn't cause them uh, to want to get right with God it's, been, it's shocking to me until I began to just really pray and I'm saying Lord what is it uh, that, that the church needs to do I, I can't get up every Sunday and preach doom and gloom I can't get up every Sunday and preach how hot hell's going to be I can't get up and preach every Sunday about if you miss the rapture there's no other way to make it to heaven I I can't get up and preach every day about the signs of the times and so there has to be a message that's going to resonate there has to be something that, that, that's going to, 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 to quicken us all as a church to really being the kind of example that we need to be and I've come to this conclusion brothers and sisters that there is a missing ingredient in the church that the world sees the church and they know where we stand on issues they, they 
They know what side of the spectrum we are. They, they know what we preach and what we believe and what we live for. They know what they're going to hear when they walk in the door. Some people can tell you what they know the preacher's going to preach and, and all the messages are, are going to sound like the same. But I've come to preach a different message today. I've come to preach another, another thought today. And over the course of this month, I'm praying that God gets a hold of each and every one of us in a new fresh anointing begins to surge in our being and it's one that's not filled with fear it's not one that's filled with anxiety and worry and and all kinds of the complacency that those things can birth within us but it's a message that there is a joy unspeakable that's full of glory that when it gets down in the church like it's supposed to there's not a naysayer in all of the world that will be able to rise up against the witness of the joy in us young or old rich or poor no matter what your background is Jesus can fill you and I with joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away a joy that Helen Keller described as being a holy fire Think about Helen Keller being born blind, being, uh, being born deaf, being unable for most of her life to really communicate uh, until she found that teacher that, that began to help her get that breakthrough. And then she was able the rest of her life to become uh, this w- example of one that overcame uh, all adversity. But she would describe joy. Uh, she said, even though I may not have all uh, uh, of the faculties that you you have. I can't do everything that everybody else does but I have joy I have joy down deep inside of me and she says it's holy it's a fire it's burning within me it's burning up everything that's not right in my life oh praise God joy is a major theme in scripture it's mentioned over 600 times in the Bible I think God's trying to get our attention You can see joy or various versions of it. Rejoicing is another. On and on and on these words. Amen. Drive the point home that living for the Lord is not some kind of a a solemn, sober experience only. There is a fear of God that grips the heart of every believer. But it's not one that does not make room for joy as well. Oh, hallelujah, that you can fear God and rejoice in Him at the same time. That you can enjoy having a relationship with God. That God is not just some kind of get out of hell uh, 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 guard. No, he, he is one that wants a relationship with us. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8 and 10 speaks of the joy of the Lord being our strength. The psalmist in Psalms 5 and 11 said, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout. For joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful. Notice notice that. Amen. Rejoice. Shout for joy. Amen. Be joyful in thee. I, I think it's the desire, amen, of God that we are rejoicing in him. Psalm 16 and 11, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 95 and 1, oh come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Praise God. Amen. There was joy breaking out in this service today. Amen. Shouting and running and dancing and amen and singing at the top of our lungs. We were making a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Amen. We're on the rock today. We're on something that's unmovable and unshakable. This world isn't on the rock, but the church is on the rock. The prophet Isaiah Isaiah 12 and 3 said, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Oh, I'm thankful for that well of salvation. And I'm thankful for joy. That's like a bucket. And when I begin to lower that bucket into salvation, and I begin to taste and see that the Lord is good, when I begin to drink 
deeply of him that saved me from a life who knows what. Him that gave me promises that kept me on the right path and keeps me on the right path. Oh, hallelujah. I put my bucket down again. I put it down again. And I put it down again. I can get into the wells of salvation morning, noon, and night. I can drink deeply from the wells of salvation whenever my soul gets thirsty, whenever my knee gets big. Hallelujah. The trials of life just send me to the well. Sickness just sends me to the well. Trouble just sends me back to the well. Where I find joy. Joy. Hallelujah again in Isaiah 35 and 10. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee. We've done enough sorrowing and sighing. We're good at laments and grief. And some Christians only feel like they're doing it right whenever they have a sad face. They only feel like the only, ex- the only expression that should be seen on them is one of complete concern about how world, how everything is horrible and bad. That doesn't make us attractive. Smiles will draw people to you better than a frown will. Hearing all of the woe is me and woe is this and all of those things and and they, it seems like every song is sung in a minor key and they, they, they can't help but always seem to have a temper for their joy. If they get a little bit excited about something then they, they back off a little bit because they, they, don't, they don't want to be too rejoicing or too joyful. I, I, I can't have too much excitement about living for God. I, I feel like I gotta, I, I, I always gotta qualify my joy. I feel, I feel almost like it's wrong for me to, to really celebrate joyfully in the house of the Lord. I, I feel like if I'm telling my testimony, somebody's gonna get tired of it. If I, if I, if I keep talking about the goodness of the Lord, that they're going to say, why don't you come back to reality? What reality do we want to live in? We want a reality that lives in the joy of the Lord. This world is not our home. We're but passing on. But while we're here, we have joy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus speaks of joy. In John 15 and 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, my joy might remain in you. Now, Isaiah the prophet saw him through the eons of time. Amen. The messianic prophet said that he would be a man of sorrows acquainted with grief and that we would turn our faces from him. But the picture of that is not the picture of the 33 years of Jesus' life. He depicted the Messiah in his crucifixion. He depicted the Lord in his time of offering up his own life. Amen. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, Amen, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Uh, if it be thy will, but nevertheless not my will, thy will be done. He wasn't, he knew what he was drinking, that cup. He knew, he knew what that meant, that he was taking upon himself the sins of the world. He knew that it would require him to die. Amen, a horrific death that uh, 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 that would be despised by everyone whoever's on that cross was to be despised that's what Isaiah saw him as the messianic prophet amen saw the Messiah being crucified but Jesus did not raise any eyebrows amongst his disciples when he said that my desire is that my joy might remain in you They weren't shocked to say, oh, he's got joy? Oh, oh, I haven't seen Jesus joyful. I haven't heard him laugh. I haven't seen him smile. To me, he's but just one big, you know, prisoner of sorrow and pain that 
that, that he's just here just constantly weeping over the lost and, and the dying and the hurting. I, what do you mean, joy? I don't want anything that, that like that. If that's joy, I don't want it. It's, it's kind of like the college student that kept get, a, get asking all the time to go to the keg party. But his fellow uh, roommate would spend the hour the next morning with his head over a toilet throwing up his guts with his, his headache and, and all of the sickness and everything. And, and then the guy would say, oh, you missed it last night. And he would look and say, I don't think I missed anything. I got to clean this bathroom up. It stinks in here. It, it smells like vomit and filth. And you can't even explain where you were last night or what happened, but you're wanting me to join in that. I don't think I want that. None of the disciples looked at Jesus and said, why did we have to sign up for this? they would all, except for John, end up being martyred themselves, but they would joyfully join their Lord in such a, an act of service. Amazingly so. But Jesus, he didn't cause any confusion when he said, I want my joy to remain in you. And Christians ought not to cause any confusion in the world when we tell the people, amen, that are questioning us or, or are asking us about our Lord and Savior and our, our desire to live for Him. And we say, well, we enjoy, we rejoice in God. We have a lot of joy in our life. They shouldn't look at us and say, I ain't never seen it. Oh, I don't see that at work. I don't see that on your Facebook post. I, I don't ever see that. I, uh, I can't even remember the last time you really smiled. We're doing it wrong, church, if that's what we think is right. We're doing it wrong if we think that's right. John 17, 13, And now I come unto thee, and these things I speak to the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Again, that's Jesus uh, saying, this is my prayer. Uh, this is my desire. I want them to have my joy uh, fulfilled in themselves. Jesus was joyful. Amen. When he spoke parables, uh, most of his parables ended up, uh, amen, with the person finding the great pearl of great price he, the lady that swept her house rejoicing because she had found the coins that, that was missing oh you could not hear him talk about the prodigal son and not get excited thinking about that father's joy when he saw his boy come back parable after parable teaching after teaching Jesus described amen joy joy not a temporary joy, but a true, lasting joy. He said his joy would remain in them to give them full joy. Amen. Do we want that same level of joy as well? Fullness of joy. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. Not temporary. Not just some kind of joy that's tied to some kind of happenstance. That's happiness. But fullness of joy. Jesus was motivated by joy. The writer of Hebrews chapter 12 verse number 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and the set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus kept joy ever before him. You and I that are motivated by joy, that keep joy before us will make more of a difference in our world than trying to condemn or shame or use any other tool because the world ain't falling for that anymore. I remember many years ago when my wife and I first moved up here, Camden was just a baby and uh, somebody in the church uh, signed us up for a free demonstration of a Kirby vacuum cleaner. We didn't know that's what it was. We thought somebody was going to give us a, a, a room rug cleaning for free. Well, he did. He showed up with a new vacuum and wanted us to buy it. And, and so here we are sitting through this gentleman's, dis, uh, you know, his uh, demonstration. He was... He started off by telling us how if we would help him so he could go to some trip, you know, you remember the spiel that they gave. And, and he, he just needed to sell a few more of these vacuums and his whole world would be better. And so he's 
demonstrating this vacuum. And I mean, we had, we, you know, my wife is, is clean and we're clean in our home. But I mean, he turned that Kirby vacuum cleaner on and the suction began to pull up dirt we didn't even know was there. And he had an ability to catch it in this, this cloth and show it to us. And uh, he found out that we had a little baby and, and that Camden was crawling. And he ran that vacuum over the living room floor a couple times. And he said, you want your baby crawling in this? You really let your baby crawl around? And, I, I, and he would say one thing after another. And I told my wife, I said, he is using more guilt and shame to convince me to buy a Kirby vacuum than I have ever used as a preacher trying to tell somebody to get right with God. A lot of guilting and shaming. And, and, and you know, we, we were young and we, we didn't want our baby crawling on all that crud. And so we was like, whatever we got to do, let's get it. Let's get one of those vacuums. And they sold us that way. I've been preaching here 20 years. Many of you have been a part of this church for 66 years, 67 years now. And this, this building isn't completely full. It's got a good crowd, but it's not completely full. And there's a whole lot of people that have come and gone down through the years that can take or leave our church. They can take it or leave it. They can say, well, it's, it's okay if you want it, but it's, it's not for me, I guess. What difference might it make? if they begin to experience a church that was so full of joy living for God that we just loved God with everything that was within us and we were filled with joy that we could not even describe and we could go through life uh, even in the midst of trials and tribulations holding on to a joy down deep within our soul. They would look at that and they say, you know what? It makes sense when you preach about hell. It makes sense when you talk about how bad things are getting. But it don't make sense when the world is going to hell in a handbasket and your hallelujah is getting louder. Our hallelujah is getting louder not because people are going to hell. Our hallelujah is getting louder because we're getting more joy. More joy. More joy. More joy. More joy. More joy. Hallelujah. More joy. More joy. God wants to fill you with joy. He wants to give you that joy today. Oh, praise God. Jesus kept joy ever before him. Another great champion of joy is the Apostle Paul. And through the teaching of Paul, we come to understand how powerfully joy is. He taught us, amen, in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is made up of righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen. He taught us in Romans 15, 13, that the God of hope wants to fill us with all joy. He taught us in Galatians 5, 22, that no fruit of the Spirit bouquet is complete without the fruit of joy the apostle Paul found his own joy was multiplied when he saw the spiritual growth of the people that he was ministering to he described that growth in them as being a crown of joy he wore about his head this crown of joy amen when people saw that crown upon his head and asked him about it he would say I rejoice in all of my sons and daughters I rejoice and all of the people uh, that are following my example uh, that are living for Jesus because uh, of my preaching Philippians 4 and 1 therefore my brethren dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown so stand fast ye in the Lord my dearly beloved 1 Thessalonians 2 19 for what is our hope our joy our crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming for ye are our glory and joy okay so now you see a shifting there Paul Paul was full of joy Paul felt that that reservoir of joy springing up within him regularly but he begun to now receive joy from watching amen there be a shower of joy come forth from him to other people when he began to see other people get that joy as well he said nothing excites me more than you tapping into the same well of joy that I have found. 
That's the message for the next few services. That the world that is dry, the world that is hurting, the world that is despondent, the world that is suicidal, the world that's looking for answers needs to come in contact with somebody full of joy. We are helpers of joy. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians 1.25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance, your furtherance and joy of faith. Paul said, I am coming to you. I am going to abide with you. I'm going to stay or continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. They were excited that he was coming, but they had no clue what he was bringing with them. Oh, hallelujah. What, how wonderful would it be if people just liked you? When they seen him coming, they stepped aside. A lot of men didn't, and a lot of men died. Bad, bad Leroy Brown. Or what was it? Big Bad John. What was the one? Do people step aside when you come down the road? Oh, there she is. <laughs> but get on my phone real fast and act like I'm busy. Oh, they're calling again. Let me hit the mute button and act like I'm unable. I don't want to be around her. I don't want to be around him. Or are you the kind of person, like all of us know, there's multiple people in your life that are these kind of people, that when you see them, your face, you just smile. You just, you're just happy. You want to talk to them. You want to spend a few moments of conversation. You like it when they invite you to their house or out for dinner. It's, a, it's something that you appreciate. Oh, hallelujah. They were excited about spending some time with the Apostle Paul, but they had no clue what he was bringing. And he said, I am coming to stay and continue with you for the furtherance of your joy. So what I have, I'm going to leave behind with you as well. So that you don't have to just come to me and have a momentary time of uh, 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 feeling a little bit better. <sighs> a lot of people play tag with the church. A lot, of, a lot of people come and tap the church for a few services. A lot of people come and spend a little bit of time around a believer. A lot of, a lot of people just kind of want to come around for a season. But then, you know, once they kind of get their feelings better. Once they, once they kind of, you know, things are lighter, their load is a little lighter. I got people praying for me. I got some people hugging my neck. I got some people patting me on the back. I got some good people in my corner again. Then they just kind of slip off. And, I, I, and that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. And I thank God for the influence that First Apostolic Church of Steger has on the local communities. Amen. We are known for a church that prays for needs. We are known for a church, amen, that opens our, our hearts to people. We are known, amen, we support various charities in the area. We, we give as we can. We, we're, we're known for that kind of church. We want to have, we want people in Stager especially as they drive up and down State Street and they look upon our church. I want people to smile. I want people to think, you know what? I don't know if I could join that wild bunch, but I'm glad they're here. You know, somebody said the true test of a church in a community is if you closed your doors and left, would anybody mourn? And I don't want to close our doors and I don't want to leave, but I would like to think that if we ever did leave, this town would go in full grief mode. If they even heard that we were wanting to move to another location, they would come along and say, oh, what, what, what do we have to do to keep you here? What, what do we need to do? What, how can we keep you here, church? We, we want you to stay here. You're such a blessing to the community. But it's one thing for people to smile when they drive by the church. It's another thing for the church to fill them with joy. God's joy. Amen. That's what we're after here. Paul said, I want to come and I want to leave something behind. I want to leave a transformed life. He saw himself as a helper of joy. Not just in a temporary manner. We can give food to a hungry person. We, we can give rent assistance to somebody needing money. We, we can help somebody, amen, uh, uh, through the various uh, organizations that we support and temporarily meet somebody's need. But then afterwards, we can forget about them. We can go on our way patting ourselves on the back thinking we did our job when the reality is 
God didn't want us just to give them a little sprinkle of joy. He wanted us to bring them to the well. The well of salvation. When we get excited about what we have like we should, everybody's going to want it as well. Everybody's going to want it. Hallelujah. And so this month, my prayer is that myself and that you, this congregation, hallelujah, Sister Cox, come. I don't have to preach a whole series in one Sunday. Thank God. But it's my prayer. It's my prayer. That we understand our role. Hallelujah. Amen. Robert McChain said joy gets increased when you spread it around. It's not like you can run out of joy by giving others a little bit of your joy. But it is increased by sharing. Joy is increased when we begin to share it with others. And Paul told them, he said, I'm coming to you in our text. And he said, I'm coming to you with this perfect, this one reason. He said, I'm not coming to condemn you. I'm not coming to tell you where you've gone wrong. I'm not coming to correct you. Now see, Paul had had to correct them. If you know the text, you know that there is between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians another communication between Paul and the church there that's not recorded in our Bible. It's a communication in which he has to set some things in order and rebuke some things that he found in the church. He did that by pen instead of in person because he wanted them to handle it on their own. He didn't want to come swooping in as the apostle and say, okay, I heard there's an issue here. I'm going to fix, 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 and now i got to run off somewhere else. He gave them instruction. He taught them how to do it properly. And then he waited to see their response. And their response was right. And the issue was resolved. And the people were saved. And the church remained. And then Paul writes 2 Corinthians unto them. And he celebrates the fact that all of this good thing had happened to them. And he says, this is why. I didn't come to you in the middle of your problem. Because I did not want to take dominion over your faith. There's a whole lot of people that when they have a problem, they want to run to an authority and they want the authority to fix the problem. But then they want to leave and not look back. Paul said, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, it's like the, it's like the parent. It's like the parent that's always helping their child get out of trouble a helicopter parent they used to call them they're watching over their kids and anything that seemed to be a problem they would swoop down and save their child and what happened was there became a dependency issue the child didn't know how to overcome the problems because mom was always there dad was always there somebody bailed them out and that codependency relationship hindered the growth within that particular child. And Paul said, I'm not going to become a codependency relationship with you. But rather, I'm going to help you so that you can walk in joy. They were, they were blocked. Their church was stifled. Their joy was stifled. But they began to follow the advice that had come and then they really, they felt the release and they tapped into it and they realized this was what we've been missing and Paul said I want to be a helper of your joy the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked it also says that within every person is a conscience that conscience preaches to them 24-7 unless they've seared it It'll preach to them. It'll remind them of right from wrong. Our world doesn't need a church that's just continually pointing out all the wrong things. We've done that. Stand together with me. We've done that. We've tried that. 
I want you to close your eyes, bow your head with me right now. I'm, I, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking maybe to I'm talking to a parent of a wayward child. I'm, I'm talking to, maybe I'm talking to somebody that's got a, a neighbor you can't just seem to break through to. You've done plenty of Bible studies with them. You, you've, you've posted, you've cut and pasted a whole lot of headlines. You've sent them a lot of sad stories and bad news. And you shake yourself regularly saying, I just don't know why they won't wake up. I don't know why this doesn't scare them to death. I don't know how to reach them anymore. I feel so strongly in the Holy Ghost. And I've felt this since September. That God knows the key to unlock that door. It's not just the multiplication of more signs of the times, more tears and agony, but rather that you and I begin to just live joyfully before Him. That we allow His salvation to be our number one focus. Focus more upon His salvation. Focus more upon His mercies and grace and goodness. Focus more upon the good news than the hope that we have. Focus more upon the positive things. And get to the point, it may take some time, where you transformed your whole self. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we would allow joy to renew our minds, the transformation will happen. And then our witness will get better. I believe this and I feel a quickening in my spirit that others believe it as well because we are sick and tired of seeing people not getting what God wants them to have. And I believe this is a key. I believe this is a key. If we'll say, you know what? I'm going to be a witness and I'm going to help you see joy. You're not going to see enough joy in sports. You're not going to see enough joy in self-medication. You're not going to see enough joy in getting raised on your job. You're not going to see enough joy in all this world. But if you can see joy in me, if we can see joy in the church, everybody wants to be around people like that. Everybody wants to be around people like that. Henry Ward Beecher said, God appoints our graces to be a nurse to other men's weaknesses. He appoints our graces to be as a nurse to other men's weaknesses. And the grace of joy will minister and work as a medicine in a world that questions whether or not there's any more joy to be found. Would you lift your hands with me right now in this building? Would you just begin to pray? Would you begin to pray that the joy of the Lord would get a hold of our lives like it hasn't in a long time? Would you begin to pray, God, I want to tap into the well of joy. God, I want to, I want to tap in. I want to tap into that. And I want to overflow with joy. I want to be filled with joy. And God, I pray that you teach this church over the course of the next many services how our witness in the community can grow our witness on the job can grow our witness with our neighbors can grow when they see us full of joy they'll be happy to be around us they'll be happy to come by and talk to us because when they're around us they feel what they don't feel regularly when they're in our presence they feel your presence Oh, hallelujah. When they're in our presence, they feel your presence. We help them experience your presence. We help them to come to a conclusion that life is worth living. If you're a believer here today and you would testify by coming to an altar that you know down deep in your heart that God has spoken to you about this and you want to spend a few moments in prayer why don't you rush down here amen and just throw yourself before the throne of God and say here I am fill me fill me fill me fresh fill me fresh fill me fresh spring up a well dig a 
up that well again. Dig that well one more time. Whatever's been blocking your joy. If it's sin, you need to repent of it today. If it's sin, get it out of your life. Repent of your sins and he'll fill you with joy unspeakable and full of glory. If it's fear, let him, let him give you victory over that today. Whatever's blocking joy, whatever's blocking joy.
January we went through 15 days of fasting and I know we're in February but I'm calling the church to another week of fasting I'm calling the church to a week of fasting from negative speaking I think we could take this next week and every time there is something rise up within us to talk negative about what's going on in the world or negative about our husband our wife our children our neighbor boss negative about what's going on anywhere in your life instead of allowing yourself to hear yourself say again what you've said over and over again let's speak positive and joyfully instead change your words this week release a confession of joy this week instead of that others and I just wonder I wonder what would happen what would happen some of you that do a lot of Facebook posting, I want you to spend this week Facebook posting joyful things. Find the best joyful memes you can find. Just fill the, I mean, between all of you and all your followers, we could probably connect with 100,000 people this week. Amen. Joy, just throw it out there somehow or another. Let's, let's seed the atmosphere. Let's seed the atmosphere with joy joyful quotes joyful scriptures joyful statements even when you pray this week pray differently you know a lot of people when they pray all they're doing is rehearsing their fears and their problems they spend 
15, 20 minutes and all they've done is just go through the laundry list of everything wrong in their life. That's not praying. That's complaining. So this week when you pray, just confess faith. Confess joy in every. Will you do that with me? Let's do that. Amen. Let's do that. I believe together. Maybe you might need an accountability partner or somebody to say, hey, if you hear me start to say something ugly or negative or whatever, help me. Remind me that we're fasting from that today. Praise God. Oh, what a great day it's been. What a great day it's been. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this service. We thank you for everyone that's come out. We thank you for the joy. We feel it. We feel the atmosphere is charged with joy. Hallelujah. Lord, let it not just linger only in this building around these pews, but let it go with us into our cars because it's not just something that resides here. It resides in our spirit. It resides through the power of the well of salvation. We thank you for it today, God. Bless each and every one of these wonderful people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We had previously scheduled to have a building, a business meeting, but due to the weather forecast of last Thursday have to cancel, we're going to move it to next Sunday. So if you're part of a member here, membership, and you want to be a part of that business meeting, that will be next Sunday after church. God bless you as you're dismissed. Be friendly with one another.